Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Good day, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt. I am your host. One of your two hosts, shall I say, on this exciting podcast where, once again, Mike and I talk about revenge. Yes, yes. One of my favorite subjects, man. Uh, I love revenge movies, so I am eager to review this one. Seriously, Mike, like, why do you like revenge so much? Like, who are you trying to, like, take down? I don't know, man. I I think I have a little bit of, like, a obsession with it, though. I, I really like revenge movies. You still have to see that movie titled Revenge. Um, yeah, the one with the chick? Yeah, the I think it's French. I think it's a French movie. Man, it, is, it was beautifully shot, Matt. You would love it. Well, you know, someone got a sneak peek or something on Amazon. I tried to watch it literally the next day, and it, I had to pay for it. Don't make your goofy, weird-ass face. You know it's true. I still don't know what happened, man. Like, either I just watched it on the last day it was available, or I don't know, something my ISP screwed up. I don't know. Something was weird with that. You know what? I'm wondering. I think it was available on Shutter, right? Are you a subscriber to Shutter? I'm not a subscriber to Shutter, but I think it was on Shutter. I'm shocked you're not subscribed to Shutter. So all the streaming services that I pay for that you steal from me, from me, I think you could pay for the five dollar a month Shutter, and I'll steal that from you. That's true. I probably could. I'll look into it. Although I don't know how much I would be down for Shutter. I'm seriously shocked because you know Shutter's like all horror movies. Yeah. So the problem I think I would have is uh, being able to watch those horror movies a lot. Because my significant other, uh, Maggie, is not a fan of horror movies and doesn't really like watching them because uh, they often uh, get, um, I don't know, that remnants stay inside of her mind and then she has nightmares. So she doesn't like that. So um, I don't watch a lot of horror movies. The ones that I watch, I usually end up watching in the theater or used to watch in the theater. So... I don't know. It might not be a good service for me. But Mike, how much TV are you really watching with Mags right now? You you were just talking about how you've watched all of the Die Hards, all of the Lethal Weapons, uh, something else and something else and something else. How much of that was with Mags the whole time? Oh, not not very much of it. Um, some See? of American Pie, yeah, like See? you know when you're marathoning things for like nine, ten hours, you know I'm bound to see her, but. Uh, a lot of times, uh, it's it's during uh, when Maggie's sleeping, uh, during our our, our shifts. <laughs> so we have a, a lot of stuff going on with the, the raising the the little human. Imagine marathoning all of Friday the Thirteenth, like all of it. Wow, that would be interesting. Now, are we including Jason Goes to Hell? Of course, and space. Oh. Okay, I love space. And well. Freddy versus Jason. Okay. All right. All right, man. We're we're okay. That's a lot of movies. That's a lot of movies. All right, <laughs> man. Gonna have to get shutter. <laughs> All right. Well we'll we'll see. We'll see. The 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 richer of the two doesn't pay for many streaming services. The poorer of the two has multiple streaming services he pays for. I think he can handle the five dollars a month. All right. I think you probably can. And you can stop stealing mine. I don't know about that. Okay, fine. Fine. So, Mike, speaking of stealing, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was I don't know where I was going with that. That's not going to work. No. No. But you know one thing I did want to say is this whole uh, I sh- I don't I should not do it cuz I'm already in debt up to my freaking eyeballs, but I really want like a bigger TV because I miss going to the movie theater so bad. And I just want to be able to sit back, relax with my surround sound. Yeah, it's no fancy Bose surround sound like yours, but at least I have a fairly decent surround sound system. But I just I want like a bigger TV for that movie going experience. This this shit of being locked home and not being able to go and watch movies at a movie theater is driving me kind of nuts now. Yeah, I mean, I would like to have a bigger TV as well uh not only a bigger tv but a higher resolution Uh, i'd like a 4k tv i'd like to 
push the ISP to the limit um, because the 4K streams are quite uh, demanding on your connection. But, you know, I've got the bandwidth. So I'd love to just watch some of these, these, this new content that comes out in 4K and I can't watch it in HDR blah blah i don't know see 7 7.1 7. atmos dolby thx well, but do your bows do atmos i doubt it no 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 atmos no. My, is fairly new yeah no no i was just kidding uh no my bows are very uh are well not very old but old and uh they only support uh dolby 5.1 so there's no there's no 7.1 channel and i think atmos is 9.1 or 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 more i don't know 12.1 it's it's it's, it's something crazy it's a lot of channels a lot of channels of, of of data but yeah no so all right so i want to get obviously 4k you can't buy a tv without 4k now unless they're like small which i, I want a 65 inch and i know you mike you are gonna want like tippy top like three thousand dollar oled you know yes i would love to have that too don't get me wrong i would love to have that but realistically, I would never be able to afford that. My car doesn't cost three thousand dollars, all right? Now that's you true. that's different. You know, you're independently wealthy. So I'm sitting <laughs> right. here looking at like the best budget, like sixty five inch TV, and there's, you know, TCLs and Vizios and you know, stuff like that, all around like five or six hundred bucks. And four K HDR, all that stuff. So, you know, I don't know. There's even um, some Samsungs, uh, not like super low, but like mid-grade Samsungs that are really getting competitive on prices with the TCLs and the the Vizios. And yeah. Most of the reviews I've looked at, the the Samsungs that are in the price point that I'm looking at are dramatically worse than the TCLs and the Vizios. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. So, but anyways, I should not spend a freaking dime because I am super poor and I need to pay off my bills, especially since I lost all these wonderful contracts and had to fight to get paid this year by uh, a certain sports team for work I did. Anyways, um, so Mike, enough bullshitting. We're already in too much. We need to get to our review because yes. this is an important one. This is one where a studio contacted us gave us some passes for a giveaway real film nerds episode 167 the rhythm section yes Mike, you want to do the rundown yeah oh absolutely yep so uh as matt said the rhythm section uh this is directed by R- reed morano uh writers mark burnell a- and uh starring blake lively uh richard Break Lehman's, uh, Jude Law, and uh, Sterling K. Brown. And this is a woman seeks revenge against those who orchestrated a plane crash that killed her family. All right, Mike. So should we do our giveaway now before we start rolling into the movie? Yeah, why not, man? That sounds fun. All right. So we already gave two codes away. On the radio station on Monday, which, you know, you were awake for. You could have tuned in because you can listen to Magic 99.1 all over the, the world. On the lines? To, thanks to the internets. Yes, the internets. And if you want to listen to it, you can go to realfilmers.com and click on the little picture of Lisa and it'll pull it right up and then you just hit play. It's amazing. Technology and the internets. Anyways, all right, so we have two more to give away, and I have already done our little random number generator name thing. Our first code goes to Mr. Ron Williams in Prescott, Arizona. So, Ron, make sure and check your emails. Nice. Very nice. Awesome. That's really cool, Ron. Thanks for listening. Next being an equal opportunity podcaster and it randomly pulled this name up as well miss christina peter awesome congratulations christina so check your emails 
make sure check your spam folders hopefully it doesn't get sent to spam but i got pictures on our uh, emails sometimes that happens when you have pictures so anyways mike rhythm section blake lively other than being married to ryan reynolds uh what'd you think how'd she do so overall i thought this was a departure from some of our other roles and uh it was a very gritty uh you know physical role and uh i feel like she really worked at it um i think it's kind of underrated i don't know why it's rated so low on uh the unofficial sponsor of the real firm nerds podcast imdb i know mike maybe people people just suck that that's about what i can come up with i don't know i i thought it was a good movie i enjoyed it and the shining star for me was Blake Lively's role. And I talked about that a little bit on the radio station. I really loved how Blake Lively plays multiple different characters going through. Well, she's one character, but different roles in that one character. So she starts out as the girl next door. And you see that as she's flashing back to being with her family. And then she turns into the drug addict hooker. And then she morphs into a badass 007 James Bond assassin type. And she does each one of those roles very well, in my opinion. Yeah. No, I, I think she, she pulled it off. It was it was a it was a real gritty movie. It was it was good. Jude Law, of course, he always does a great job. He was uh not not your typical Jude Law. I mean, he you know most of Jude Law's roles, he's a little bit of an asshole in one way, shape, or form or another. Uh, this is what the this is like the third Jude Law movie I've watched in a row. Like Road to Perdition, the Rhythm Section. Then I watched Contagion. Oh, I talked about that on the pod because that's on the radio. That's the thing on the radio, Mike. I do two movies now because we're streaming and everything. So oh, I, I'll, okay. I watch two and I tell them. And honestly, if you want to be freaked out more uh go watch contagion i don't suggest it because it's just <laughs> it's uncanny it's uncanny how similar it is it's still a good film i i enjoyed it quite a bit but i don't recommend watching it right now in today's climate because it just makes things worse because you're like oh look we knew about all this in 2011 <laughs> oh well we we i, I watched outbreak and i, I kind of was like oh i mean not quite the same but like oh man Oh no, dude! Contagion is like spot on. Like the virus comes from China, from oh, food, no way. from a bat and a swine. You know, oh man, that is right on. Yeah, it's it's ruthless, man. It's absolutely ruthless. It just, yeah. Watch rhythm section instead. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not it's not gonna give you nightmares. <laughs> All right. All right, so Mike Blake Lively did a fantastic job. Jude Law in Contagion, he was an asshole, like a hardcore asshole profiteer off of the virus and stuff. In this, I think he was more of an asshole to try and benefit Blake Lively's character. You know, he was the uh, the stone cold, cool CIA guy that clearly has seen some shit and is taking it out on her a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he 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 really doesn't. I I I I don't know. I believe the part where he didn't believe in her, like he didn't he didn't think she was tough enough. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, especially since she comes to him as a junkie, you know. Yep. All right, Mike. So uh, let's see. Are you looking at your structure? Is that what you're doing? No, no, no. It's no structure, dude. No structure. We threw structure out looking? the window. We threw the structure out the virtual. Uh, internet's window out of the microsoft window yeah oh man that's good yeah bam Damn. <laughs> <laughs> there i finally got a decent one Whew. Uh, I was yeah, you can, yeah you don't have to do anything for a long time now good all right good all right so let's see um the scenery was fantastic clearly a lot of it was shot in england in london well uh, yeah, London. Uh, was it? You think it was London? I don't. Uh, Scotland, maybe. I don't Scotland. know. Like the the, I don't know if uh, some of the 
places of the movie said they were taking place in like Scotland area. I don't know if they were, but wherever it was, it was pretty like cloudy and green, but pretty. Well, I think definitely some of the uh, city scenes are London just because they're driving on the other side of the road. Um, didn't some take place in Spain too? Maybe. Yeah. 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 Probably. I think. Anyways. It's probably all Europe, yeah. Yeah, it was all over Europe, all over. Because, I mean, that's where, you know, even though most of the actors, not all of them, but most of the characters that are involved in it are American, they're in Europe yeah. doing their clandestine things. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's one thing that was a little weird. It was like she was an assassin, but she wasn't working for anyone. She was just kind of working for herself getting the revenge yes do you think she's gonna just continue on being like a badass assassin for jude law i don't know it kind of indicated maybe but at the same time i don't know if she wanted to do it uh, as like a i don't know a a way of living Uh, I, i don't know hard to say all right mike so let's see how much what else do we structure here um cinematography uh sure sure um there there was uh a scene in this movie that i really really liked um i mean i don't know it's not really a spoiler right i don't know i don't know what you're thinking i mean i used to think like you and then you had a child and now you're a completely different person okay yeah um it's because i don't sleep anymore um see so we should be more aligned because i don't have a child and i don't sleep so so anyway there there's a scene <laughs> that has to do with the uh um a car chase and I really like the way that it was shot from almost the first person view of the driver. Do you think and, it was the driver or a passenger? Well, I mean, I guess it was a passenger, but you never left the inside of the car, which yeah. I thought was interesting cuz most of the time you always have like an above shot or an outside shot, not in this uh scene i thought that was cool i thought it was a way different way of doing it it was kind of like the uh bay bang movie that we uh did recently remember they had that whole scene that was like that too well he well, it wasn't leave... a whole scene though it was just like one yeah. shot yeah 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 i think i think this one was the whole like scene and it it kind of gave a different feel to the chase like i don't know it was just different because you were in the car the whole time i don't know it more immersive different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see, I I can speak the English. <laughs> yes. Today. Today. <laughs> I still stumble over. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm curious. I'm trying to figure out what you're doing. For those of you, who do, no one's on video. It's just Mike and I. But Mike keeps like looking down at stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? What are no, you doing, I'm just. Man? I'm what just. You got down there. <laughs> are you? Do you, you know? Are you just like, man? I I want to like talk about this beer that's in my hand is that what it is yes 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 i do i do want to talk about this beer but before i do that matt i need to ask you what beer are you drinking (sighs) well mike thanks for asking i wanted to get some bourbon i got lots of bourbon i've purchased it that's one thing that's interesting right now in the in the um apocalypse Lots of the hard liquors are on sale. And so I'm getting like 40 and $50 bottles of bourbon for like 20 bucks. It's pretty, pretty sweet. But um, I did not get to the pour a glass of bourbon. I am instead celebrating with a champagne of beers. I'm drinking a Miller High Life. I think it's my last one in the fridge. Oh, no. So... It would, do, do you have do you have like some system like do you have uh those amazon buttons where you can just like the the tap where as soon as the the high life is gone it like you tap that and like it just shows up at your door again oh hell dude no i got amazon pantry it's just automatic every week i get you know two 12 packs to the front door <laughs> <laughs> nice nice i wish that's how it worked that would be cool but hey maybe it'll go that way soon i don't know i don't know but i have lots of four peak but i think this is my uh last high life yeah so 
All right, Mike, where's your IPA? Go ahead. Get your IPA out. Matt, you're going to be shocked. It's not an IPA. Oh, ooh, is it a Rona? <laughs> no, no, but it's kind of like a Rona. It's a... I mean, those are on sale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a uh, land shark, which is uh, uh, very similar to a Corona. Yes, I remember you drank some of those when you were here visiting last in 2006, seven, something like that. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a burn. Is that, is that the uh, 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 official uh, captain's log? Uh, <laughs> I'll put it this way. <gasps> that bar we were drinking at when we were having those has changed names and ownerships five times since we drank there together. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's a good time to be in the bar business. No, it, they it, it was a bar and they turned it into a restaurant and it has been not doing great as a restaurant because people want it to be back to a bar. So, ah, uh, okay. Ooh, ooh, does that mean it's my turn? I get to ask a question? Sure, Matt, sure. All right, Mike. One, one of the most important questions ever on the podcast. Mike how does the rhythm section relate to the Green Lantern? Oh, I mean, no, no. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, from the, for the Green Lantern, it's like, it's like a Kevin Bacon type thing, right? You know, Blake Lively's married to... Ryan Reynolds, who's who's Deadpool, and dude, Blake whatever. Lively's in the Green Lantern. Is she, oh yeah, she is. Oh, that's probably how they met. Yeah. Oh Jesus, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. You know, sometimes you earn your nerd cred, your movie nerd cred, and sometimes you just lose it. It's okay. I've lost and earned mine multiple times too. That one's not too bad because that movie is very forgettable. All right. Um, well, after that faux pas, uh, let's just continue on. Um, <laughs> Are you not going to answer the question, Mike? No, no. Uh, MCU uh, okay, tie-in all right, all right, all right. is 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 uh, uh, Jude Law was uh, Young Rog in um, Captain Marvel, and uh, in this movie he played Ian Boyd, and then uh, also uh, Sterling K. Brown was Nyabo. Uh, in Black Panther, and uh, he was a character Mark Sierra. Wow, twofer, a twofer, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't use Jude Law last week in Road to Perdition. Yeah, you know, I could have. I think I've used him before, actually. I'm sure you have. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. He's in quite a few movies. I mean, Road to Perdition. He was kind of a a, a real sleazeball character. Um, hey, yeah. Just because he was a photographer does not mean he's a sleazeball. <laughs> was he the original paparazzi? No, because the people were dead. Oh, all right, all right, all right. The um, the uh, the first movie I remember Jude Law in like really well is uh, The Enemy at the Gates. Yeah, that was a good movie. I like that one. Yeah, oh yeah, no, of course. Of course you'd like that one, man. It's about a sniper. <laughs> oh yeah, how can you not? And dude, it's it, 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 historically speaking, I like that one a lot because you don't see a whole lot from the Russian and German perspective. It's always, well, granted, we are Americans, but it's always from the British and the American perspective. And so to see the Russians and the Germans going at it in a film was awesome. Loved yeah. it. Yeah, that's cool. All right, Mike, so, you know, now that the MCU is answered, we can get into spoilers. All right. What would you like to spoil on this one, Matt? Uh, I don't want to start off bad, but the end-all, be-all villain was predictable. Oh, um, the the... The Sterling uh, K. Brown character. Yeah, I don't remember the name of the character. It was like, it's Mark. Uh, Mark 
Sarah or whatever. So, yeah, no, yeah, but Sarah. they had a name for him, like because he was oh, unidentified. Oh, yeah, it was oh, like, yeah. Um, what what was that? Yeah, uh, I'm spacing on it. They had some term for it. But anyways, um, I I predicted like not real early on, but probably about three quarters of the way through the movie that I was like, oh, Sterling K. Brown, he's the villain. But what I liked, hopefully I don't get too much flack for it, but what I liked was that it was not like a James Bond or other kind of assassin or even just a regular movie death where the hero comes and teases the villain and he they have this long, drawn-out, half-hour-long conversation about being killed and all this shit, and then they kill him. I like that Blake Lively basically just went up and just popped him. Yeah, no, that that was good. Uh, it was interesting. Like her first assignment, you know, she she kind of screwed up. Like, but the guy ended up, you know, passing away, so it it was okay. But when she messed up on the second one, I was like, man. I don't know if she's cut out for this. Yeah, she's not a good as- assassin. She's too kind. She just can't pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I, I think it straightened itself out. Um, well, yeah. But that second one, though, that second one was a lot more hardcore than the first one. Like the first one, like yeah. she just walks up to him and shoot. You know, was supposed to shoot him in the head. The second one, I mean, it was like almost taking his freaking head off. Yeah, well, also, I thought it it was reminding of her, her um, previous um, job as a a, um, a junkie prostitute or whatever, and I felt like that was hard, like, to try and be back in that mode. Back in, like, that lifestyle? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Interesting. I, felt like, I felt like that was part of her, her hang-up. Uh, for that character but i was like "Uh oh man you're not gonna i was like this is not gonna turn out well if you don't start executing uh figuratively and literally well yeah you can't go around somewhat killing people and not finishing the job and expecting your boss to be happy about it and then you see the repercussions when she didn't finish the job that oh yeah it was awful yeah it, not only the guy died but like basically his whole family got blown up and again, Jude Lodge has like shrugged it off. He's real good at being a, 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 a likable villain, I guess is a good way to put it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, Mike. He has so, had a lot of those characters. Yeah, seriously, he does. He does. Um, like even, you know, in um, uh, Captain Marvel, you know, he was a villain in there, but he was a very, you know, likable villain in that. I mean, he starts out as not a villain and then later on you find out he is the villain which is well not similar to this but anyways yeah wasn't he in um oh what's that movie the the robert rodriguez one that was like an anime he was in that right um robert rodriguez one that was like an anime yeah james cameron produced it was he in that great now i'm losing my nerd card no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Um, it had like the the man. It was like the the kind of robot. Like, dang it, I'm terrible. Hold on. Are you talking about Alita Battle Angel? Yeah, he wasn't in that. That though. was doesn't well, look like. That, it's uh based on a manga. Oh, and, sorry. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think Jude Law was in that. I don't remember. No, 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 he wasn't. I, uh, but for some reason, I thought he was. But yeah, Robert Rodriguez directed it. James Cameron produced it. James Cameron had had owned the rights to that movie for well, not to the movie, but the 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 rights to make a movie for it for God, like twenty years. Like James Cameron read that manga and just fell in love with it, and immediately paid a whole lot of money to get the rights to it. And now there's this huge great now i'm getting off topic but there's this huge push to make the movie theaters not theaters um the movie studios make a sequel for it at minimum make a sequel for it they uh, i think robert rodriguez and james cameron originally planned it out to be like a trilogy 
but people want at least a sequel because there's a whole lot more left to that story to tell a whole lot i mean you know we got edward norton as the big bad guy at the end and you get like two seconds of his face and that's it yeah no it it was good movie man uh it just didn't do that well so i mean i'm sure it's a uphill battle but with james cameron behind it he's had like some of the most successful movies in the world so i'm sure he'll just pay for it dude i really liked it i really really liked it it's one of the ones i bought on blu-ray i think i even bought it on 4k blu-ray see again another reason why i need to get a 4k tv because then i can watch my 4k blu-rays i don't have many of them but the wars like all the the new star wars i bought in 4k blu-ray because of course i did yeah why not you know i mean it's it's like five or six bucks more and you get like the uh the most recent one um rise of the skywalker uh target had a thing where you got like a photo book of like behind the scenes production photos and stuff very cool very cool of course i was gonna get that one of course mike's shaking his head because i'm such a nerd <laughs> so i sit in my when it comes my office aka oh. toy room <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it comes to Star Wars, man, the 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 y- y- you got quite the collection behind you there. So, are you watching Clone Wars? No, I, I'm not, but I should. You should I be. Should. It's good. It's real good. Real good. I Maybe got, I'll watch that. I got shamed by the uh, the girlfriend when we were watching it last because I was talking. She said, "How dare you talk during Star Wars?" From her. Well, that's true, man. How how did that happen? I was drunk. <laughs> all right, all right there Mike. it is all right all right your turn what what do you want to spoil on the rhythm section since i immediately went straight to the very end <laughs> uh, you know revenge movies like we talked about earlier i i you know i'm predispositioned to uh like this kind of movie more and uh i like this one um it reminded me a little bit of uh, the recent uh, female kind of revenge movie, uh, Peppermint, with uh, Jennifer Garner. And um, also, uh, it's kind of female taken-y, kind of. Like, taken without Liam Neeson. Dude, I think this was better than Peppermint. Yeah, I, I think this was better than Peppermint. Peppermint was okay. It was interesting. I'm not I'm not slamming it. It was nice to see it in the theater and stuff, but I think this movie was better. Um yeah, the other cool thing I really liked was that 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 car chase scene. I, I liked being I guess the passenger, essentially. Um the way that it was shot, it just had a different feel for it. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um we see car chases all the time we watch matt and i watch a million movies so for that to stand out that's pretty cool are you logging all these movies that you're watching on the streaming on letterboxd no man if i did dude I... you totally should because i thought you were going to so you can compare it to how many movies i watch because i log everything and i'm slacking dude i'm i am nowhere near what you are i literally watch maybe three movies a week maybe and that's including the ones we're doing for the review and you're watching wow. six a day <laughs> well i don't know man uh i guess i've just had some extra time like i said with the little human and um dude so, do it. Uh, come on do it come on come on it's only april yeah. come on it's only april <laughs> think back think back you could log them all I don't know if I can. I might have to go through my Netflix and my Prime and be like, what's my viewing history? I'm like, whoa. Dude, that would be cool if Letterboxd like, imported your viewing history for you. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. See, but for those of you who uh, want to know what I'm going to rate the films, if you follow me on Letterboxd, you'll know like immediately because I put my rating in like right off the bat when I get done watching it. Nice, nice. Well, I was. I think I've talked about it before. Like literally, when I was walking out of movie theaters, I'd do like Letterbox, like right away, because then I don't. I'm not influenced by like anything else. I'm like, all right, I just saw the movie, done. And then if I see videos or other reviews or whatever, it's not going to influence me because I already made my decision. Nice. So do you just put in your star rating and no comments? Right. Yeah. I don't leave a review. I don't leave a review. I just put if um, uh. I watched it, the star rating, and if I had seen it before or not. You don't have to leave a review. You can if you want to. I think more people follow you if you leave a review, but I I don't want to. I just, okay. my rating's enough. 
Yeah, all right. I got you. So speaking of ratings, Mike, how many reels do you get the rhythm section? Yeah, that's that's all right. I rolled in there pretty good, huh? Yeah. That's yeah. two. Um, you know, I, I think I'm going to do uh, three and a half reels out of five on this one. Dude, seriously, like, this is getting ridiculous. No way, it's the same? Yeah, I give it three and a half reels, yeah. Yeah. This is absolutely ridiculous, Mike. Ugh. How dare you? This is terrible. How terrible. dare you? We need terrible. to we need to watch them. We need to go to a movie that I really love and you really hate, or vice versa. We need we need to do that just to prove that we are not coercing. Coercing. I am. I am. See English. Now I'm losing the English. You know, we're not uh, talking about our reels before we sit down to record. Oh uh, yeah. There's no. Uh, there's no collusion there you go see there's that english now spell it <laughs> uh hey um hey service <laughs> hey Can service you spell that for me <laughs> is that Uber? i would say it but then i was worried it was going to go off and then then you know other people listening we might go off on them and anyway is that like instead of uber eats it's uber spell uh yeah uh, yeah oh man uber spell would be great a dude pulls up to your front door knocks on the door and says all right mike this is how you spell it <laughs> all right thanks for the five bucks <laughs> have a nice day sir <laughs> uh it's funny uh that'd be ridiculous but hey, maybe it's coming to that i don't know maybe maybe we're going wally style Dude, if I'm going to be trapped in my home forever, I need to get somewhere where I have more land so that my neighbor's barking dog will not drive me insane my waking and sleeping hours. Yeah, your neighbor's dog, doesn't it go off just 24-7? All the time. Just... All the time. It, yeah. It... Now, now, has it changed? Um, I feel like uh, in my neighborhood, people are putting out their dogs that didn't used to because I think their dogs are driving them batshit crazy. Because they're at home all the time. Oh, no. 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 We have more people walking their dogs. Oh, and just walking yeah, in general. Yeah. And yeah, he yeah barks, just walking. Yeah. Yeah. And he just barks at out. all of it. The people walking. Cars. People and their dogs walking. Havelina. He barks at all of it. At all of it. Crickets. Yeah. I still don't know how that dog has not figured out that he can jump over the fence either. Like they have a, one of the short fences, and he's a full size black lab. He could clear that fence if he wanted to. My he doesn't want to. I guess not. My my black lab basset hound. He could clear that fence, and he was nowhere near as tall as that dude. I don't know, man. Um, I I know that uh, being home all this time, uh, our 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 dog that we recently adopted, Dutch um named after predator yeah yes uh we um have learned more about him and he doesn't like it when the wind like makes one of the doors like like have a like a like a sound like kind of like a whistle but it's it's a weird it's a weird sound Hmm. um from like the seal or whatever is like losing a little bit and he like he gets all like nervous and tucks his tail and all this i'm like man what does that remind you of and then um also the uh thunderstorms he doesn't like thunderstorms well, that, well, that makes dude, sense no though. dogs like thunderstorms i i've never had a dog that likes thunderstorms at all it's too loud too loud and it's I, I think it's part of too loud and um not seeing it coming you know like the loudness and the noise mm, yeah um so that's some of the observations, but like, man, when you're, when you're with your animals and, 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 you know, we're raising a little, little teeny human, but all the, uh, parents out there that have a little bit bigger sized humans, it's gotta be, it's gotta be pretty crazy right now. I don't even want to think about it. I couldn't imagine what I would be like when I was like, imagine if we were teenagers, Matt, and we were stuck at our house with our parents for months. Oh, dude. Well, my parents probably be okay with it because I would just work. Because <laughs> that's what I did. I just worked. I worked a lot. I've been working for years. Yeah, but you wouldn't have been working at the restaurant. Well, maybe. Uh, no. They would have found maybe. something. 
Well, yeah. oh, maybe I'd be you delivering been in the tacos. kitchen. Hey, I might yeah. maybe I'd be in the kitchen. I did dishwash a few times. That sucked for a few shifts. Oh, that shit was ruthless, dude. Ruthless, and it's not what you think. It's not you know the constant like cleaning the plates off and stuff. That's no big deal. You have like a little spatula, and you it's real quick and easy. Like you don't you barely touch the shit. You probably know. It's the fact that literally when you are done washing dishes for eight or nine hours and you like go to leave and you look at your hands and like your skin is like literally like falling off. That's the that's the worst. It's like some horror uh, movie, man. Yeah, I remember uh when I did dishes at um uh, at the uh Jack in the Box. Um there it's not really that hard cuz you just put it in this industrial washing machine. Um it was just you know, you didn't like doing them even though the industrial washing machine only takes like a couple minutes. Yeah, for um, for me it was, you know, everybody bringing the place when it was busy, you know, it's stacked up, but you get, you know, the spatula, you clean it off, you throw it in the rack. Once the rack's full, you throw it in the washing machine, and you just keep going. The, you know, the work itself wasn't bad. It was fine. It was nice, you know. There's no bullshit. You just did it. But my hands, dude, my hands were just butchered. <laughs> I don't think I had that as much, but uh, I, I wasn't also only doing Yeah, dishes. you weren't sitting I, there I, constantly I, washing for, you know, your entire shift. No, I just got burned constantly. That's, oh, that's God. That's... Ooh. Being over the grill was uh, burn, burn central. All right, Mike. So, what are we talking about next week, Matt? I I was I was thinking about that, and uh, there's this movie that I watched on Netflix, and uh, I I think you would Hold like on. it. Is it one of the ones that I have down on my list here in front of me, right here? See here. I don't paper. know. Hold hold it up. I'm not going to show better you better to the camera. I'm not going to show you. See, that's the paper. Um, there's two that came out that are on my Netflix list that I would like to watch that are Netflix originals, I believe. And I'm wondering if one of the ones you're going to say is one I want to watch, and you probably have already watched it. All right. So uh, I would like us to uh, review the movie called Code 8. Damn it. See, maybe we do think too much alike. See, I have Code 8. Like, I'll show you. And uh, Badland. Like, here. Look. There. Can you see? It might be backwards. Uh, right there on the bottom. Yeah, well, back it up just a tad. Like, do do it, but... Yeah, okay. Yep, I see it. Yep. I literally, like, I had it written down. I was like, I want to do one of these, too. So, all right. That's it. Code 8. It's on. Next week. All right. Netflix original, Code 8. Maybe, uh, well, I don't want to do Badland for my other one for the radio. I'll have to... I'll find something that I haven't watched in a while and do... I'll do that for the radio, maybe. Unless you got a suggestion. Hmm... I don't know. Um, I've just kind of been marathoning like older movies that I liked, like um, like watching on the Lethal Weapon series was kind of cool. Um, they're all on Netflix. Yeah, I gotta um, find something though, because I mean, Lethal Weapon, like that's something we probably would do. Like we would like do like all of them in like one giant podcast, maybe. You know, I'm thinking. Yeah, I even thought about doing a giant podcast where we just talk about all of them and like likes and dislikes like a, a lot different than we normally do just talk kind of like overall generalities of them yeah of the whole series yeah 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 um so i don't want to do that so i'll have to figure something because yeah i like doing two because i i think i know lisa likes getting two in there and until you know i can actually start watching new movies in the theater i think it's a good way to do it all right that's fine so to close out the show i'm gonna say this um, do you think I should buy a new TV? Tweet at us, uh, Facebook me, email me, you know, real film nerds everywhere. Tell me if I should buy a TV and which one. Or if you want, you know, you're welcome to donate a 65 inch TV to me as well. That uh, That's generously welcomed. <laughs> yeah. 4K, you'll, you'll review it permanently, right? Like, uh, it's like a, um, y- y- you will constantly review it and let everyone know how it's doing. Yeah. Yep, yep, every week. And then I will also name my firstborn after you, but I don't ever plan on having a firstborn like Mike over here. So uh that might not happen, but you know, maybe a hamster or a fish. Well, well what what about if you get get another dog or or adopt a cat or 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 a fish? See? Maybe a pet. Yeah, there you go. If you if you supply me with a 65-inch TV, I will name one of my upcoming future creatures or child after you nice nice 
It's fair. That's fair. I like it. I like it. I think that's a good trade-off. All right, Mike. I think I'm done. We've been rambling okay. for a while. We have been rambling for a while. Uh, this has been a fun episode. Um, well, uh, Matt, I guess uh, with that, we'll let everyone go. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, as always, you can follow us on all the socials. And please review us on uh, Apple iTunes. That seems to uh, give us the best, um, I don't know, turnout. It gets us most noticed. I think uh, statistically on our hosting site, I don't know how big of a statistic it is, but definitely the most downloaded site where people get our pod is Apple Podcast slash iTunes. Is Apple. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, with that, thanks. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. That's Taylor Swift with The Man on Matt Jake 99.1. The Man, the Myth, the Legend. Matt Henshaw with us on the phone now on Magic. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Lisa. How did you like that intro? Best you ever had in your life? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't deserve something that good. <laughs> ah, yeah, you do. You're calling in. You're with the Real Film Nerds podcast, and you want to talk movies. I take it. Yeah, so uh, I did two this week. Okay, what'd you see? I saw one that I said I wasn't going to watch, but I watched it anyways, and that was uh, Contagion. Oh, Contagion. Yeah. And how was it? It is a lot more impactful in today's world than uh, I was anticipating. Yeah. Was but, that was that bothersome? A little bit. A yeah. little bit. It's a little, um, it's definitely more horror story than it is drama. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. What, what um, got you to watch it? Oh, I just came across it, and it was uh, on one of the... They had, like, a free preview weekend on one of the movie channels, and I was like, ah, I might as well watch it. Oh, my god! It's gosh. been years. I saw it in the theater when it came out in 2011, because, you know, Steven Soderbergh, he's a fantastic director. Right, so. right. And killer cast. I mean, Matt Damon, Kate Winslet, Jude Law, just incredible cast. And it's a really good movie. It really is. It's just... In today's climate right now, yeah. unless you really want to be spooked, don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it, it's really close to home right now. It does. It does. But it's still a really good movie. So okay. that's why I, I still give it four out of five reels. Four out of five reels. All right. And where did you say you could catch it? Uh, I believe it's on uh, Cinemax. Cinemax. I believe, or okay. you can rent it on any of the streaming services. Okay, very good. What else are we talking about this morning? Now, the one that we're doing for the podcast, this was very exciting. And for those of you who listened to my podcast last week, uh, we were contacted by a big movie studio, uh, Paramount. Mm -hmm. And they gave us some free codes and asked us to review a film that they just put out on streaming last Tuesday. It's called The Rhythm Section, starring uh, Blake Lively and, again, Jude Law. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So it's called The Rhythm Section. Section. Rhythm Section. And how was it? It was good. It was good. It was um, It's kind of like a, uh, a, a action drama, uh, James Bond spy kind of thriller movie. Okay. Um, I think Blake Lively really knocked it out of the park. She did a really, really good job. She starts out as, like, uh, a sweetheart, a girl next door, turns into, like, a drug addict that turns into a hardcore assassin. Wow. All in the span of one movie. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty wild. Oh my gosh. And so I don't I don't I don't want to ruin too much of it, but yeah, it's uh it took turns that I was not expecting. And what how many reels are you gonna give it? I, I liked it a lot. I give it a three and a half three out of five reels. Three and a half out of five. And you said that uh, people can actually listen to your podcast for a chance to win a digital copy? Yeah, we're giving away uh, multiple digital copies of the film because Paramount gave us a bunch and said, here, give some away. Might as well. Everybody's trapped at home. Right. You know, let's right. uh, let's get some people watching movies. Right. So. so remind people what the name of your podcast is and where they can find you. It's uh, realfilmnerds.com and just Real Film Nerds. You can find us on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, you name it. 
All right. Very cool. All over the place. Very cool. And so. Matt gave me a couple of codes to give away as well. Give me a call right now, 445-9910, and I will hook you up. Matt, thank you so much for calling in this morning. Everything going okay? Yeah, it's going good. I'm, uh, you know, getting a little burnt out of not being able to run around and get in trouble outside or not go to the movie theater. <laughs> right, right. Well, hopefully That's this will the all... real one. I know. A lot of people have said that to me. Hopefully this will all be over soon and we can get back to getting on. Well, it's either that or I'm going to have to go out and buy a new giant TV because I need that movie theater experience. <laughs> Well, that's always an option, too. Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds podcast. Thanks again for calling in. Thank you, Lisa.